Hi there, it's Tracy Kerdin from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial will show you how to paint Rainbow Lake with acrylics on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. I'm going to go ahead and get started right away. So all the materials are in the description of this tutorial. The first thing I'm going to do is position my canvas vertically. Again, this is an 11 by 14, so these measurements will have to be different if you're using a different size canvas. But the horizon line in this painting is in the exact center which is at the seven inch mark. So I am taking my ruler and I am measuring seven inches. So that's the center of our um, vertical format. So it's 14 inches high, so seven would be the center. And I'm just taking my ruler, kind of marking seven inches and then horizontal line across. So double check that to make sure that's center. And then we have another line that we're going to do and that line is going to divide where our dock in this painting is and our lake. So we have sky, lake, and dock. And that is almost center but a little bit below the center. So instead of three and a half I did 3.25. Um, if you want to simplify this, so if you're doing a different size canvas and you just want to find the middle midpoint of that, you can just do the midpoint of that because it's just about midpoint. But I'm doing 3.25 to give myself a little bit more water than dock for this. So the dock is 3.25 inches high and I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking my ruler and I'm measuring that mark and then I'm doing horizontal line across. For this one I'm going to grab my t-square to make sure that is lined up evenly. And there's our two lines dividing our canvas up. So next we're going to paint and we're going to start at the top and work our way down. Uh, the top is sky and it's a very simple gradient of phthalo blue and titanium white. So the blue and the white is what I loaded my palette with. And this is a three quarter inch flat wash brush and that'll be used to paint the sky. So we're going to create a gradient of a blue that's darker at the top and gets lighter at the bottom. So I mixed equal parts blue and white together and used a little bit of water on my brush and that helped thin the paint down. I'm going to take that blue mixture that I created on my palette and start at the top. Do left and right strokes all the way across. And as I work my way down, I'm going to grab more white on my brush and ideally it's going to get lighter. Although this phthalo blue color is a very strong blue, so it does not get light as easily. Even if you keep adding more white, it just might end up being a little bit too dark. And if that happens, you can always wipe the brush off and then grab more white. So we wanna just keep letting this sky get lighter as we work our way down. Keep adding more white to your brush left and right strokes, work your way down, and then kind of brush up. When you start below the color and then brush up into the paint, that helps that color blend into that darker color. Um, also want to note that your sky doesn't have to be a perfect gradient. I have streaks of darker blue down here, streaks of lighter blue up here. Does not have to be blended all the way, but I am gonna go all the way down to that horizon line. At this point, I am going to wipe my brush off because my blue is just turning the same color regardless what I do. So I wiped that off and then grabbed the white so that should get you a much lighter version of that by wiping all that blue off. And go down to the horizon line. I'm gonna try not to paint below that horizon line. Next we'll be painting to the water and we will be using the exact same two colors, the phthalo blue and the titanium white for the water. But this time, instead of horizontal strokes, we'll be painting those in vertical strokes. And we will be doing wet on wet blending. So we will let our blue and our white mix together. 
So I'm going to load my brush in the white and grab phthalo blue on each corner of the brush. And then I'm going to paint that water area using vertical strokes. So I'm going to take that and brush vertically. And we want a lot of streakiness to happen here. So we want our blue and white to blend, but we want it to not blend all the way. We want to create this kind of abstract mesh with vertical strokes with white and blue, and it's supposed to resemble water. So these vertical strokes are just resembling that sky reflecting in the water. And a way later step of this will be adding a reflection of our fall trees in this water as well. So this is the first layer of lake. And so you might find it kind of tricky when you, um, so we have this horizon line. Um, I'm taking the width of the brush and I'm lining it up with that horizon line and then dragging it downwards. I am going over my dock line and that's okay because we'll be painting over that dock, but I don't want to go over my sky. So I don't want any of those vertical strokes to kind of float up in the sky. That's why I'm being really careful when I um, paint that horizon line. An alternative to that is you can apply some masking tape. On, on your horizon line and that might help with that. Just make sure your sky is dry if you're going to use the masking tape in that area. I do use masking tape in a later step when I do the dock, but right now I'm just doing my best to not let those lines go above the skyline. I'm just doing vertical strokes. It doesn't have to be consistent. So some parts of the water are brighter, lighter, some are a little bit darker and that's okay. That's done on purpose. You might need to tilt your canvas in different angles. If you're working on an easel, it might help if you turn it horizontally or upside down so that you can get in those areas as you're doing those vertical strokes. I found a lot of white is needed in this, so I loaded my palette with a little bit more titanium white. So you should be using a higher proportion of white than blue because that blue is such a strong color and we still want this water to be very light. If we made this water too dark, our bright fall colors may not show up as well or it might be hard to cover some of the water area with our orange and yellows that we'll be doing later. So right here, it's a lot lighter but then some areas ended up with that darker blue streak and that's okay. So I'm just using that tip of the brush to line up with that horizon line and just dragging each stroke downwards. When you're done with this step, you will need to let your entire painting dry so you can take a break and come back or you can grab like a hair dryer, dry your painting real quick. We are going to be applying painter's tape in the bottom area of the line so make sure that part is especially dry and then you want to get your uh, painter's tape. This is actually masking tape. Um, painter's tape would work too and then you just want to lay it down above your bottom line so that we can block this area off for when we do our dock. So it doesn't matter how thick your tape is, you just want that bottom line to help you mask that area so that none of the paint color from the dock bleeds up into the water area. And all that blue that ended up below that, that will be painted over. I'm going to load my palette with Mars Black and also freshen your titanium white if you need to. Grab your three quarter wash brush. Make sure all that blue is rinsed off and dried off. So our dock is a little tricky because of the perspective. So it's kind of a one point perspective thing going on where the lines are vertical in the middle, 
but then diagonal um, on each side. So as we're painting that in, we kind of want to keep in mind that we're going to have to change the direction of our strokes um, as we're doing this. So this the technique is the same as the water. I triple loaded it. So I loaded in the white and did black on both of the corners. And I'm going to do the same technique to let the black and the white blend together, but not over blend it. So it's going to create that streaky look. And that's going to create that full wood style too that we want to try to achieve. So in the middle of the dock, the strokes are going vertical. So that's pretty simple. We just painted that in a vertical direction. But as we go to the left of the dock, the strokes are going to start going slanted. So we want to start changing the direction of the strokes as we're painting it. So right here, instead of vertical, they're going to start going this way. So these are kind of going diagonal. And instead of worrying about coverage right now, I'm just establishing the direction of the strokes. So it's not covering completely, but that's okay because we can always go back and finish covering it. We just want to establish the direction of the strokes. So, and then to the right, they're going kind of, um, they're also going diagonal, but the opposite direction. So once I establish the direction that my strokes are going in, then I can start really filling that in solid, getting all that blue covered up. If there's blue, pretty much getting all the canvas covered up. But again, we want to keep in mind that we're utilizing only tiny, tiny bits of black. That black is a strong color. It can take over very fast if we use too much of it. And then our dock might be too dark. Uh, we want kind of a medium gray color in our dock. And then to so make sure you're using a higher proportion of white than black. You can use a little bit of water on the tip of your brush to help those colors blend better and give you a little bit better coverage. It will thin the paint down a little bit, but it will help you get all that color on there quicker and allow you more blending time. So I'm just going to keep layering all this black and white on there, adding bits of black in there to make some of the dock area a little bit darker, but making sure that all that canvas is covered and no blue is showing through. On the upper edge of the dock where our tape line is, I added a little bit extra black. So I'm just taking that black on the tip of the brush and kind of stroking it down on the edge, but not all the way down. So it makes it look like it's a little bit rustic, a little bit darker further away. So I'm kind of do, doing this dry brush style. I'm not really adding more water to my brush, adding only teeny tiny bits of that black and just quickly um, stroking that down. And if it gets too dark, uh, you could always go back with your white and then start on the bottom and just kind of go back up with the white. We are going to be dividing this dock up with into panels. So we'll be using a round brush in a later step to kind of divide that up. So your wood look does not need to look perfect. In fact, if you have so many streaks of black and white, it's just going to make it look more pretty and rustic. And so you don't need to do anything perfect right now. Just let those colors kind of blend and do their thing other than uh, really focusing on the direction of your strokes to create that perspective. Thank you. 
So next what I'm going to do is load the tip of my brush in just black. Kind of loosen that up a little bit with the water, but we want just the black on the tip of the brush. So get that paint right there on the tip of the bristles. We want to outline that edge. So where that bottom part of that tape line is, that's where I'm going to do this horizontal line. So that is going to be our black line outline for the edge of our dock. So I'm just going to take that the tip of the brush and just outline that entire edge with the black. Then I'm going to go ahead and dry all of this with a hair dryer so that I can use a pencil for this next step. The next step is going to be doing our uh, dividing up the panels and I want to draw that in pencil first before I do that with the paintbrush so I'm going to make sure all of this is dry so I'm going to draw five lines with a pencil and this is going to be kind of hard to see on camera but you can see the direction that I'm doing I'm doing and it helps to use a ruler too so you can take a ruler and do this so the two lines on the left are going diagonal they're about three finger widths spread apart or I just estimated I really didn't measure this um, the first two lines are diagonal but the angle changes um, towards a more of a vertical line so the two um, far diagonal lines are more angular. The two closer to the middle are still angled but a little bit more vertical and the one in the middle is exactly vertical. So I recommend that you draw that out with pencil first so you can get the angles um, kind of how you want them to be. And then I just took the, the wash brush and just like I did that horizontal line on the edge of the dock, I just used the black right there on the tip and I'm using the tip of the brush to paint that line. If you feel more comfortable doing this with a round brush, you can, or even if you wanted to just use a paint pen for this step, like a black paint pen, and that's more comfortable for you, you can do that as well. So I'm going back over those lines. My bin line is vertical. The two outer ones from the middle are a little bit angled, and the two lines on the left and the right are more diagonal. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If they're a little off, uh, it kind of adds to the rustic effect. It's not going to really alter the painting in the end if your dock lines are not perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse this brush off, set it to the side, and grab my round brush. I want to do the little nail dots that are on the ends of each of the panels. So I'm grabbing my round brush and I loaded that in the Mars Black. And just on the tip of that round brush, I'm doing dots. So each little panel gets a dot. The one on the far right actually didn't get a dot, but if you have room uh, for like a center dot point, you can do that on the far right one. And then you can carefully lift your paint tape masking line up. I had a little bit of paint seep up it under that tape line but it's probably because I outlined it with a little bit watered down paint so that was expected. Um, if you have seeping lines too that's okay because we have um, the ability to paint some like grass in that area that might disguise that a little bit and we could always outline our line again to make it thicker and that would disguise that a little bit as well. Then I'm going to take my round brush and paint a little post on the right. This just helps with the painting not be so symmetrical. Um, I like asymmetry a lot so I like to paint like random things on one side of the painting and not on both sides of the painting. So I'm just painting a little post. I just grabbed my Mars Black. Again this is the number four round brush. I'm just painting out the shape of it. So a little oval at the top, two vertical lines on each side. The post goes to about the halfway point of the water, so that's how tall it is. And I'm just kind of using the same um, technique with the black and the white, so letting those blend together, but not all the way. Okay. <laughs> 
And then if you need to, you can take the black or the white and kind of loosely outline the shape that so that you create a little bit of contrast in the lines on your post. And then we're going to go ahead and introduce Hooker's Green Hue Permanent to our palette. I am going to show you how to paint the grass and cattails that are kind of behind the edge of our dock. So I'm going to start with the green and I'm still using that number four round brush and I'm just going to load green on the tip of my brush and then also add a little bit of black to the green. That'll darken your green but also create some color variation in your green so it's not all the same kind of color green. So you're just grabbing different amounts of the green and the black and you're just making little strokes that start behind the dock and you're just quickly stroking up to create the little grass blades. I made the grass blades a little bit taller on the left and the right so towards the post they're a bit, little bit taller over on the left they're a little bit taller. I am keeping in mind that I'm going to have a dog in the middle of my painting so I'm not doing a lot of detail work with the grass in the middle because I know that a lot of that's going to be painted over anyway. And then for your cattails you can paint like a little oval and then a very loose line attached to the oval a little bit little stroke above that oval and then like two diagonal leaf things. Um, this is a little bit tricky with this four round brush. It's hard to get that very thin line down from the cattail piece. So if you wanted to use a smaller brush you can. You could even use a paint pen for this but these are just simple silhouettes, simple cattails. I'm going to put a few over here on the right. Again, not doing any in the middle because I know there's going to be a dog there and I don't want to do too much detail work in that area. Next, I'm going to start painting in the fall foliage trees that are way in the distance behind our lake. And I used one of these brushes. I call it a uh, scruffy brush, bristle brush. It's basically a brush that has the natural hairs. They're very coarse. They're not the soft synthetic bristles. Um, you can also find them labeled as like a stencil brush. So any like craft store might have stencil brushes that have those kind of bristles that are flat on the bottom. They're very good for texture work and um, it makes it easier to paint these kind of leaves because all we have to do is stipple the, the colors. So I loaded my palette with red, yellow, and green. Those are three colors we'll be using in our fall leaves. The red is Pyrol Red, the yellow is Cad Yellow Light Hue, and then we'll be using that green as well. If you don't have those exact shades of red and yellow, you can pretty much use any red and yellow to achieve this effect. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a darker red. So I'm going to mix equal amounts of red and green together. Also grab a little bit of yellow. This is going to turn brown. Um, we want a dark kind of shadowy color on the bottom. We're going to start on the bottom above our horizon line and that's going to be darker and we're going to gradually um, get this color to be lighter and brighter. So mix red, yellow, and green together. I'm going to make kind of a dark brown color and then take your, your brush and you're just basically dotting, um, making little um, clusters of dots and you're just creating a very flat sort of area above the horizon line. We're not painting any of this below that line so none of it should be going into the lake. It should all be above. If it's overlapping a little bit below that line because you're basically dotting circles and a part of that circle kind of goes under the line, that's okay. Just try to get everything kind of building up above that line. And I mentioned as we're going to work our way up building the height of these trees, we're going to let this color get brighter and lighter. So I grabbed red when I went to reload that brush and I'm using that red to kind of build that tree higher. But then I also grabbed some green to create some variation in that and it's still shadowy on the bottom. So a little bit more green at the bottom. Um, the height of the trees are going to vary uh, the trees that are on the far left and right are 
higher than the ones that are kind of in the middle. And you can see the final result of what that's going to look like. There are uh, various heights in the tree. So as you're building this up, you want to keep that in mind so it's not all the same height everywhere. But pretty much it's all just clusters. Don't worry about where your branches are going to go or anything like that. So I grabbed some yellow on this tree on the left and then grabbed some yellow over here in the middle using that yellow, yellow to kind of brighten that up uh, but keeping that bottom still dark and shadowy and just building those trees up a little bit higher. Very abstract at this point right here building some height on this one. You might find that you'll need to rinse the brush or just wipe the brush off because you're not rinsing the brush between grabbing colors and it might just end up kind of all meshing together. So if that's happening to you, just keep a towel handy and you can wipe off excess paint on your brush, especially with this red. This red is very strong. So grabbing this yellow isn't really helpful because that red is already taken over. So um, rinsing it or wiping it off is a solution if you're having that problem. Again, grabbing some of that green to kind of make sure that this bottom part gets shadowy, using that green to create some darker spots on the top as well to create some depth in those trees. So I've reached about the midpoint of my sky on the left and the right trees that are slightly higher and I'm not going to go any higher than that. If you wanted your trees to go higher, you can and just add a touch more shadow on the bottom, but I am going to wipe my brush off here just a little bit to make the um, top layer super bright. So I'm wiping my brush off. You could also rinse if it's too much and then I'm grabbing just the yellow and so at the very top of my trees I'll move my hand here in just a bit so you can see the very top of the trees super bright and yellow that's gonna create some um, pretty contrast make it look like that light is hitting just the top of the trees so yellow at the very top of your tree line and just kind of gently blend that down into your orange and reds making sure that top part is bright. A later step in this painting, we're going to go even brighter and use white and yellow to brighten that up even more. But right now, we're going to move along to the next step and we're going to do the reflection in the water. So all our pretty trees are reflecting in the water. And I used the three quarter flat for that. So grabbing our big flat brush that we used in the beginning of this painting and I'm going to uh, dip it in the water and I want to slightly water this paint down. Um, you can do this two ways. You can do this kind of watercolor style. Um, I started watercolor style, but I didn't really like how it um, applied. So if that's not working for you, as like it's not working for me, you could do this dry brush style. So basically we wanna create this very thin layer of red and yellow that kind of um, go um, in a vertical direction in our water area, but we want it to be very thin enough to allow a lot of that blue from the water to still show through. So it's gotta be very thin, translucent, and it's gotta just kind of um, start out kind of bold and colorful, but then fade away as it goes like down in the middle of the lake area. So this is watercolor style because it's watered down. Um, it's not kind of fading away. You can try this, so grab a towel and kind of wipe the brush off. And a little, little bit more yellow onto my palette here to get some of that bright yellow color in there. Load only tiny amounts of paint on there, um, but wipe it off so you don't want a lot of paint on your brush. Start at the base, um, at just below the horizon line. You can line up the flat part of the brush to the horizon line and just quickly 
drag down and you're just kind of like smearing that paint down. Um, you don't want that to go all the way down. So you still want bright blue to be just above the, the dock. Um, but the pretty much the top half of the lake has that bright reflection. So you want to kind of vary that. So right here, I just did the super bright yellow. And I'm not reloading my brush a lot. I'm just kind of letting whatever's left on my brush kind of fade away. So you, it needs to be very, very light, see-through. Load only tiny bits of paint on your brush. So right there, I accidentally grabbed some black when I loaded my brush, but that ended up being fine. So I quickly wiped my brush off because I know that if I kept smearing that black, it would have just kind of made it messy. So I wiped it off and just kind of blended that black in with the water and that turned out just fine. Making that just go down, trying not to cover all of the blue so you should have uh, lots of variety in colors, bright yellow, you have your oranges and reds, and that little bit of black on accident ended up being um, just fine. I'm gonna kind of grab a little bit more yellow. I like how this bright yellow works, so I'm just kind of allowing that to appear a little bit more. So we have our reflection and our water very thin layer reflection and I'm going to go in and touch up my dock. So earlier I mentioned how that black line kind of bleeded under the tape line uh, but also when I did my grass it, all, it didn't, there's, there's a little bit of a gap under the grass. So I just took my brush and redid that line to make it thicker so it met that grass and also there weren't any little bleated lines anymore. To do the next step we want to make sure everything in the water is completely dry so you can hand dry it with the blow dryer or you can um, take a break come back. It shouldn't take too long to dry because that was a relatively thin layer of paint that we used although we did use a lot of water in that step. So make sure it's dry and we want to do the little white reflection lines that are going horizontally so I'm loading, I'm using my flat three quarter brush for this and I loaded white just on the tip of the bristles to create that little, uh, make sure that the bristles are nice and crisp and horizontal as I paint this. You can also do this with a round brush if it's easier, but I'm just using the tip of my brush to create little horizontal lines, reflection lines. So the ones that are further away in the distance, so the closer you get to the horizon line, those lines are shorter and closer together and the lines that are towards the dock are wider and kind of more spread apart so if you kind of think about perspective when you're doing these lines so do as many lines as you want just don't go overboard so these ones are shorter these ones down here are longer and you are painting over whatever reflection lines you created just don't paint over your grass and cattails this next step requires everything to be dry before proceeding because I will be transferring the dog template to the canvas. So let your picture dry and I'm providing you with the dog template. So this one is sized for the 11 by 14 canvas. So you print it out and it looks like this. So it's sized accordingly. And then I trimmed it down so it'd be smaller and I could figure out the placement of the dog. So in the written part of this tutorial, I explain where I got these templates from, where you can get different kind of dogs from, and how to turn that into a template. So I do have another kind of dog you can pick from, but there's also a website I'm providing for you. You can go to that website and you can find different other kinds of dogs so you can customize this. And basically what I'm doing is with the graphite paper shiny side down placement of the dog so it visually it looks best if part of the dog's head so the top part of his head overlaps the horizon line a bit so it goes above there although it may not be possible if you're using like a smaller dog it, it won't be able to do that and that's fine um also if the paws are a little bit kind of not 
exactly in the middle of the dock, but a little bit below that line of the dock. It's maybe a three quarter inches down from that line of the dock. Um, so just kind of play around with the placement until you find a good spot for your doggy. And you want to press pretty hard, especially if part of the dog is overlapping our um, dark part where the trees are. That might be kind of tricky. So you want to press really dark in that area. And also in the dock area, it might be kind of hard to get that sh to show up against the dark part of the dock. Um, but the water, for the most part, we should be able to see the, tr the tracing of the dog. So you're just drawing the outline of him. And then you're going to go ahead and freshen your palette with some new Mars Black. And I use the number four round brush for this. You might need a smaller round brush to get into some of the intricate um, details like in the face and the paws. Um, but for the most part, the four round worked. And basically, you're just going to fill your silhouette in so everything inside of that line is filled in solid. Uh, when I do silhouettes, I find that if you add a teeny bit of water to your brush as you're painting the black, that helps to really get that paint to flow and spread faster. I am going to go silent here for a little bit while I fill up the shape of the dog. One more thing I want to know is just be careful around the face. Really pay attention to where you drew those lines and switch to a smaller brush if needed to help you get into those smaller areas, especially where the mouth is and the paws as well. Just be really careful with those areas. Next, I will be adding shadow underneath the paw. So I'm just going to not even rinse my brush off. I'm just gonna wipe that black that's already on my brush so that when I paint the shadow, it's gonna be very translucent and light paint. So I'm just brushing that dry brush black down at an angle, kind of in the same direction that I did with the wood grain. And I'm just stroking that down below his little paws to create just a little bit of shadow under him. 
And then one thing you can do with your silhouette is add a little bit of white highlight to it. I like to do this with a lot of my silhouette paintings. It helps the shape to pop a little bit, even though we're not adding details to our dog, like eyes and fur, we can add just a little bit of highlight just to give them some form. And basically I just took the four round brush, the titanium white, and just on some of the edges. So right here, in his mouth where it's opening, I did it on top of his head, some where the curves are on his back, a little bit on his tail. Gives it a little bit of contrast to help that stand out, especially in areas where um, if it's pretty dark, like where the head is, it's pretty dark behind that area. So a little bit of white helps that to pop out a little bit. You obviously aren't gonna outline the entire shape with white that would be kind of silly but just a few little areas and then if you want you can paint the collar so you can add kind of a customizable touch to this painting my dog has a red collar so I'm just going to paint this collar red and there is a little notch kind of sticking out from that traceable that part of his collar so that's up to you if you want to do the collar I just did that with pyrol red just one little stroke around the neck and I'm going to touch up kind of his ear back here that didn't really get painted. A little bit of his nose, just touching that up really quick. So one thing you might notice is, so where the head is, it's a little bit dark behind there. And we did the white to kind of help with the contrast. But what you can do if you still want that to have a little bit more contrast, you can go back with your bristle brush and you can add some lighter color behind there. And I can show you what I mean by that. So I'm just going to grab my bristle brush and I'll use the yellow to kind of brighten up that area just a bit and we're also going to be so if you're not going to do this step to lighten up that area around the head I do recommend doing this this step also because we're going to be add some we're going to add some brighter color foliage at the very top of the trees as well so I'm just grabbing um, some yellow and red and I'm just adding those lighter colors especially this yellow this yellow really looks nice and bright and just adding a lighter area right here so that that dark part of the dog's head will stand out just a little bit better. Again, completely optional. If you like the way it looks, you don't have to go in and add any of that. You can touch this up just a little bit. And then with the four round brush, you can add the tree trunks. Also optional if you don't wanna do this detailed step, you don't have to. But I'm just taking that round brush and drawing very, very thin, loose lines. They start out vertical and then they just kind of branch out. The branches are not all attached together because some of the leaves might be in front of the branches so we don't see the full branch. So just making some main branches and just a few little smaller branches sticking out. And then a final step that I'm going to do is add some brighter color to the top part of the trees. So I'm going to mix yellow and white together. This is gonna create a really bright, pretty yellow. And I'm basically just adding this just to the tops of the trees. This is going to make them super bright at the top. It's gonna to give them some highlight, make it look like the sun is hitting at the very tops of those trees. Create some very pretty contrast in the painting. So I'm just doing that at the top, a little bit at the bottom, so a few little strokes of bright yellow towards the bottom as well, but mostly at the top. And that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint Rainbow Lake with a dog silhouette. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for painting with me and thanks for watching.